Hey, everyone. Welcome to the new Trust Economy. I'm Tracy Hazard. And I'm Monica Profit. And we are so excited to talk about something that Monica is really excited about. <laughs> <laughs> she just got her tech. <laughs> I did. I just got my tech delivered. It's like, it, it's like the best delivery you could ever get. It's way okay. better than Amazon. It makes Amazon look stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. yeah. So, so that's the first thing we got to though, define. What's tech? I can hear someone going off in the background, especially my dad. Who I know it's delivered. Like, yeah. What does that mean? My dad's, <laughs> right? my dad's saying that I can hear it right now. I'm going to get the text message. <laughs> um, so tech delivered means, you know, you, you, you go through the process of dreaming up this idea. You have it. It's a technology platform. You know how it's supposed to work. You get it all mocked up. You get all of the functionality and you learn all the technology in the background, but you don't know how to exactly code every single piece. And you need to find Especially that. Especially on the blockchain. <laughs> Especially on the blockchain. In fact, I did jump into Solidity and started teaching myself Solidity just because, and that's the coding, plat, the coding language for Ethereum. But you already have to have a really good background as a general front and back end coder to be able to use solidity. So it's, it's some pretty deep knowledge, right? So you can't just like go dabbling in there. Like, like you can maybe make a website on the weekend, which I once, you know, I taught myself how to make websites 20 years ago and I did it over a weekend, but I can't really do that with the blockchain. You know, I, mean, I can learn enough to like be able to bullshit my way through a conversation or like be able to catch someone else who's trying to tell me it's way harder than it's actually is or something like that. But mostly you need to find people that know what they're doing and you have to figure out how much you're going to pay them, how you're going to pay them, uh, how are you going to fit it in the budget? If it's going to be in-house, out of house, do you trust them? How the delivery works and, you know, finding the technology component, whether it's a CTO and a tech team or a dev shop that you work with is really, really, it's a huge challenge because, you know, whenever there's something new, like a whole new technology, like blockchain, people flock into it. And then people who can develop in that particular language, which become very, very, very high demand, right? So well, that means you know, they become high priced. <laughs> yeah, you know, we saw this. We saw this back when I was covering three D printing five years ago. It was the same thing. Like if you could get three D designers to come into doing it, they were super expensive, and right. and designers like us, we were in high, high demand because we had deep knowledge in how to design products, not just how to three code three D printing. So you right. have this kind of like that's what you're saying. And it's like, if you have a deep knowledge and user interface and how to create a great, you know, front end and back end to your sites and, and have all of that, and then have the added value of being able to code in the blockchain, right. And in solidity, as you talked about, you know, that's like the added step of value. And that's where we were five years ago. But what we found was that there were so few people you had to sit, you would, you would quote a job and then you'd sit around and wait for them to get their funding <laughs> because you knew you just couldn't quote something reasonable at that stage or people were giving away their, you know, the, the, the flip side of that is that their people are teaching themselves it and they don't have that deep knowledge, but they give away their skills to right. people and then they devalue it at the same time. So you had both sides happening and, and what you ended up with never worked. Like it was oh never gosh. a good product. Right. So that's what's happening. I see the same thing going on right now in blockchain coding as well, oh, no. you know, and, and, but what ends up really happening, that's so difficult. And you're right about that. It's like, how do you know if someone's really good? at this? How do you know if you're getting what you're, you know, you're going to be able to get out what you need and how do you plan for that? Yeah, so exactly. So let's talk a little bit about how you did that. How did you go about, you know, really exploring and finding the right developer to work with you? So I first, I mean, I'm not a CTO, I'm a CEO, right? So uh, right off the bat, out of, out of the gate, if somebody is an, an investor and they're talking to me, they're saying, you have vision, but like, who's going to make this work? Who knows all the tech? And I'm like, me <laughs> for the most part. Um, but you know, like who's going to actually do it? Well, that's what we need to raise money for. You have a chicken and an egg problem. You know, when are you, you have to get the money, but to raise the money, you got to show them you have something, but you don't have anything until you get the money. So you just <laughs> run around and around. And you know, I, I actually ended up, um, working with and, and sort of advising a couple of companies. So I watched different blockchain companies that were doing maybe slightly similar things um, in terms of securitization or they wanted to do an exchange or they were doing something in online payments and something. So it was close enough for me to go, well, what's your process? And some of them were just, they were blockchain geniuses. And so they were very empowered to just make their, make their stuff work. Or they already ran dev shops and they just added some blockchain developers and they knew how to manage those teams. And again, they could get them cheaper than you would retail because they were already kind of wholesaling as their own dev shop. Right. Um, so tech people are already have, had so much advantage, but 
I didn't always see that tech people could understand their customer well enough to make a quality product. They needed the CEO person that goes, I've got the vision. I know the market. I know the customers. I know the interface. So, so you have to have a really nice balance of both. and You do. You really do. And if you don't, then you've got to sort of like try to pull all the pieces together yourself and then find people that you can like, you can work with in small pieces of it. So I was looking for a CTO for a while and then I decided, nope, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to throw my energy into what I know I'm good at. And that is being in front of people, writing the book, talking about it, getting the word out, getting the philosophy of it and getting the vision of it out. And I just figured, you know, it's just like ringing a bell. If people, it's like dogs can hear sounds that we can't hear. If you ring the right bell, the right people will hear it. You just have to keep ringing it. They're like, I've been gonna... looking for a project that fits my skills. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Or I've been looking for a project to invest in. I thought something's going to eventually come out of this. And basically I just, I met at some people who worked at one developer shop that they did an entire blockchain of their own and, on, um, and they, were, they were working on new use cases. So as, as the market sort of matured through 2017, 2016, 17, um, we were able to eventually by 2018, they were looking for use cases and we were a use case. So we became, because I had enough of a vision crafted, they said, we get your use case, we have the tech, let's partner. So we started that conversation. So no longer was it just who has money, how do I get their money to get the tech? Money, tech, okay, wait, 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 yeah. investor, money, tech, investor, money, tech. It was partnership, mutual mm -hmm. help, mutual benefit. So now suddenly I had built enough value on my end of it through the use case and the conversation around it and the actual vision of it that they said, I get your vision. I want to build it. We need a vision to show what we can build. Right. So it was well, perfect. I love that. I love that process. And, you know, there are, I've done a lot of articles over the last four years that I've been writing my column for Inc. And, on getting funding and, and doing all these things. And here's what I found works again and again with all the people that I've covered over time. Those that are getting seed funding, those who are getting their early stage money, are doing something that is just, they are out there and they are pounding the payment and they are doing something that is showing what the value is, even if underneath it, it's a facade. And so right. we call that, we call that a prototype, right? Right, <laughs> so, right. So um, what we do, what we call it in product world is sometimes we make a functional prototype where it's ugly looking, but it works. Right. And sometimes we make a, um, a visual prototype, a prototype that is pretty, like a but rendering, it but right. it doesn't work. It's just, you know, it's essentially we're creating a video rather than a website that actually has functionality and code from button to right. button, right? Right. And so thinking about that as is which one do you need and which one's best for your, for your case? A lot of tech companies, a lot of people with a tech background go straight into the functional. Yep, they do. But Absolutely. That is, a, I find, and over the 27 years that I've been designing products, is that I find that the visual first works better yep. than, the tech, than the functional first. And the yep. reason is, is because, because when you got the functional first and all of a sudden I say, well, that doesn't do what I thought it would do, right? I, right. You're, I automatically rule you out. But when I see something and I say, oh, can it do this? If it, and and, uh, right. and then you go, sure, of course it can. I'm writing that down. The customer wants this, right? And now right. At, because it didn't already have those features, it just looked like it and they assumed it had it, right? Yeah. So you're able to build to the customer need and that's more successful, faster adoption at the yeah. end of the day. And that's yep. kind of what you've done here. So that I really I love that. And so oh. you've got a lot of that in the process. So that is an ideal way. I'm going to tell you right now, you are on a faster path for success and you've lowered your risk for failure right there. Absolutely. You're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, now I can go to people and say, here's what we have. It's not just a deck. It's not just, you know, a mock-up. It's actually, we have, you know, the skin for the front end that's already click throughable, already functional in terms of here's how it actually works. And then the back end is done now. Our tech partner got the actual blockchain. It's on the Ethereum testnet, Ethereum testnet right now. It's going to be put onto the mainnet soon enough. We have actual properties that you can go through and it's dummy information now because it's on testnet. But we can now, we are so close to being revenue positive. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's just incredible. Oh, I'm, I've, not, I've not seen you this excited since oh my God. I, I, I first met you and you were talking all passionate about, you know, <laughs> your book launch because you were just launching your book at that moment. Oh, that's and it right. was like it was just coming out and now I'm seeing it again. And you know what? It's, oh my God. Uh, you know, that hard work in between. I think that people don't realize the toll that it takes on CEOs and on yeah. the business of these companies, but it took a great toll on you over that time. And it, it is. Oh my God. Like a, but you're, you're seeing it because you're like glowing. 
glowing right now. <laughs> so those of you that are listening, get on the video, take a look at Monica. She's glowing right now. She's so excited. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm, I'm so proud of you. And I, and I, oh, I just got you. to, I just got a sneak peek at it guys. It's really cool. So yeah. I'm so yeah. excited. It, We're it, raising it, a small like round just to be able to like get the new skin on it to make it super sexy. And so we don't really want to do anything until we get it looking beautiful. Cause it's like the artist in me was like, this has to be pretty too. Come on, come on guys. And so well, I went and just t- taught myself how to make it pretty. And my right hand guy, Austin was like, Oh, I can just mock this up. And then like one of my advisors is like, Oh, I'll make it clickable. And I'm like, you guys, we just because- made it pretty too. <laughs> yeah. We just did all of that. Awesome. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's so good. So, you know, this is interesting because, and I think that I just really want people to understand that when you're going through these builds, there's so much changing in the technology that it's going to have to go through multiple revisions. I just oh wrote an gosh. article uh, um, about a company, Justin Shane, I interviewed Justin Shane of soft serve and it's a company here out of LA and they don't, I don't know that they advise in, in blockchain at all. But he said something so smart when I was interviewing him. They advise people who want to develop apps and software and um, online uh, communities and things like that that require a deeper software coding um, than just a, you know, a website or a normal right. membership site, right? It's deeper stuff than that. And so he said, what happens so often when a founder comes in, they like have their founding budget, but they forget to have enough maintenance budget in right. constant development and changes. Yep. And I have to say that we fell into that trap too. Like, I mean, it was just a, we did not anticipate that our site would grow as fast as it would. And we, our members would grow on our podcast platform. And what we are now in the process of doing is we have to break apart our, our uh, server for the files from oh the gosh. front end where people insert them. Because ah. we're crashing our own server with too many simultaneous. Oh we just gosh. didn't think about the amount of people who would upload at the same time people are trying to pull files off, right? And, right. and plays. But we have so many podcasts that have such high a number of plays that the constant requests on that side is so strong. That That's great. Our, That's it, such a yeah, good problem to have. It's a good problem to have, but we didn't anticipate the budget ne- being needed early. Luckily, we have a partner like you. <laughs> and Luckily, that partner said... Well, let's not wait. Let's just do it now and we'll worry about paying it for it later. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> like, you know, yes. like, Whoa. Yay. So yeah. we're it like four months ahead of our actual budget schedule that we were able oh, to Oh, thank we God. Planned it in almost too late, right? And yep. so we're getting it four months ahead of that. And way before our, our need is going to crash it completely, right? Right. And so it's so, but that is so important for you to plan in. And that's what Justin was saying to me in his article is like, there, there are a few things that you should pay attention to. Number one, you should go for the most stable as possible software platform. So the one that has been there the longest. And so is that why you cho- choose the Ethereum net? Um, I wanted to be ERC twenty compliant, or, and to be able to to honor as many ERC twenty coins as as the market truly ended up, you know, possessing. And it was like, I feel like everyone everyone's just throwing a coin at it. So it wasn't like I wanted to worry about the coin aspect too much, but I know that the Ethereum network is, it's robust. It's been there a long time. Um, I love the founder, of course, Vitalik is amazing. And philosophically speaking, I feel like it's the most robust because it's so open source and it's so collaborative. And so there've been a lot of things built on that particular network and it means it's non-proprietary and there's a way to do tests as, and you can, you can branch things off and do private tests. You can do public only, but you can, you can do everything that with Ethereum, I believe you can do most things with Ethereum that you would otherwise do with more private chains, but those private chains can also lock you in. So it's, it was a tough call um, to figure out who, and you know, we may, we may pivot again. I mean, it could be right. that we have it built one way and then we, we build into our budget one year that we're going to be switching everything over, migrating because things are going to change. And I understand that's just going to always have to be a part of any tech company's budget. So, you know, we've got something now it works. It's great. And it may evolve and in the future, but for, for now, what the way that we were able to find tech partners, we were, we were looking kind of chain agnostically. We were thinking, you know, as long as the features are there that we want, why does it matter if it's on a specific, a stellar network or a Ethereum network specifically for what we're doing? Now I can see a lot of people would have opinions on why you would never do it on Tron or on stellar or whatever. <laughs> and I wasn't really going to touch Tron really, but um, Ethereum was just so agnostic that it was like, if I'm, if I'm going to look for possible strategic partners, I might as well, you know, not go to uh, a used car dealership in the middle of nowhere. I should go to the biggest Toyota dealership because everybody buys a Toyota, right? It's like, right. if you're looking for something that's going to be able to be transferable and it's going to be applicable to lots and lots of consumers and lots and lots of partners, you want to do something that's kind of massively 
embraced to some degree. So, right. And, and it's hard to judge right now because massively is not like, you know, massive adoption. We're talking about industry niche adoption. Industry niche adoption. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So but we're not I, talking about mainstream like adoption. And you know what? This is a very, that's a very common issue. Like how do you make these decisions, especially in an emerging technology, right? When right. you're having it at this stage of it. And the, the, the things that we found over time is that, you know, they comp these companies are in their own, their own trajectory. So like, are they in the process of getting bought out? Are they being built for the right reasons? So we just had this happen in the podcast industry and it's been like this huge, like, I mean, I have some podcasters that are really upset. And, <laughs> and so, because, so there's this other startup that, that came on, I'm going to out them. Their name is Anchor. And they, um, and about November of last year, they got some injection of cash. Like there was a big announcement. Oh, they got this investor and they got multi-millions of dollars and they took that cash and they paid podcasters to come onto their platform. They said, so, Hey, we'll put, if you have a hundred shows or more, or if you have this many shows, come onto our platform and we'll pay you to podcast a, on a monthly basis. So we'll guarantee ads for you is what they said. Wow. And then Last month, they got bought by Spotify. And in the contract of when you moved over and merged to them, you lost your rights to, to, to have a say in the advertisers and you lost your rights to get money from the advertisement. So they Ooh. bait and switched you. They bait and switched completely. That yeah. is nuts. Wow. Right. I got baited and switched when I joined a, um, a software company about 10 plus years ago. And I, I was actually writing up my offer letter to my, to my guys, right. To say, Hey, you know what? It's time. We're about to have funding. Let's like, we're about to have real money. Like this is right. amazing. Here's your offer letter. And I used my old offer letter and I got to the part where it was just this tricky dicky language. And I was yeah. like, that's what, so instead of taking it out, I actually highlighted it in red. I uploaded the offer letter to our Dropbox and I was like, you guys, check out the offer letter that I signed 10 years ago and how I got screwed on several hundred thousand dollars when that, when that equity wasn't actually real. It wasn't right. vested equity. And, and yeah. what it took to vest, it was going to be tens of thousands of dollars anyway, out of pocket with no, with no guarantee of return. So it was like, I, I, I highlighted it and I said, listen, if nothing else, I want you to see, this is the kind of stuff you cannot sign on to. So let's remake your offer letter, but I want you guys to know about this part. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That, I mean, that's the case ex it, it, to what we are trying to do here. That's against all of our principles. And so I actually close, I'm closing, I'm in the process of closing a deal, which is why I'm not going to South by Southwest. Ah! <laughs> so I will be missing it, but, um, but I'm going to close a deal to bring on a hundred high value. Oh, that's um, amazing. That's so cool. Who, yeah. Who are big stage presence. You know, that's what they have. And I'm going to bring on their podcasts and, and develop podcasts for many of them who don't have them already. And I'm doing that because they chose us as partners with them because we won't do what Anchor just did. We, right. In our principal values of our business that your authority is yours and it belongs to you and it's right. in writing, right? And so, you know, that matters to it is that, you know, that's not a deal I would take. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't, who wouldn't be thrilled to get multi-millions of dollars to be out of your company and sell it to Spotify? Right. But if I'm selling out the people that I work, that built my company, I can't yeah. do that. That is not in my ethics. Better. Yeah, yeah. And, and they, they didn't, didn't know any better when they signed it. Right, that's yeah. the thing is like... Yeah, I'm sorry, but no. Yeah. Even if you can just say, okay, fine, we're going to get bought out, but I'm going to at least pass something back on to my, to the people that made it, you know? Yes. Well, and that's, you know, that's something that I really, I'm looking for some, I'm looking for some people. So, hey guys, listen, listeners out there, if you know someone who's educated in this, I, we'd love to have them on the show so I can interview them so I can get my questions answered. Yeah. But I'm looking at creating kind of like an ESOP, an, an employee stock ownership plan. Mm -hmm. And I have employees around the world. So I want to create okay. an international employee stock ownership plan for my company. I'm actually going to split my company into two pieces, the productized side of it and the production devel development services that we have on the other side. And that's the piece that I want to make sure that the employees own because they have put their heart and soul in helping us build this. And I yeah. really want to make sure they get a cut one day when we sell it. And right. so, yeah. And so I, I'm thinking that blockchain and, and, and tokenizing it is actually going to allow me to do that. It because, might it because it might have an easier international, you know, issue. Oh, transference. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but it could also be worse. Um, your KYC could be a nightmare. Um, and so it could be tough. It depends on how you structure that. But whether you use a token or not, um, 
just making sure that you take a sleeve of your equity and you say, here's how we're going to do this, whether there's a token behind it or not, it, the distribution part of it, you may end up having more trouble doing that internationally than if you just have everybody register and own a small piece of something, especially if the token is backed by the equity. It's the same thing. The SEC will look at it the same way. Blockchain could help you keep those tra transactions clear. Yeah. Well, and, and that's but kind of what going to be your best bet. Yeah. And that's why I'm, I love some uh, the right kind of advisor for that. And that's, yeah. I think that's still so, I mean, I guess it's so murky overall. It's like, which attorney knows enough about this? And, you know, and, and my attorney, he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we got to get him on the show then. <laughs> oh, seriously. And also, you know, actually in terms of if we're putting our, our ask out, you know, I'm currently raising now that we have our tech done, we are post tech, we're pre-revenue, but not for long. And so before we're post revenue and our valuation goes up, risehousing.io, we are raising. So you can find me at Monica at Rise Housing. Reach out. I am there and I'm ready to talk with more seed investors. Yeah. And so we have links to um, all of that in the blog post. And also there's the About Us page, which is about um, uh, how should you trust Both us? Like, like, yeah. uh, why should, why should, should you trust us? Who the heck you trust us is actually what it's titled <laughs> on the website. And so then it checks, it, but it's background on both of us. And there's links to all of that too. So they can go direct through there to you and yeah. find you there. But you know, this is, it, it's, I think, you know, what we've been talking about today about this sort of getting starting and showing people the application of what you're going to be doing. Like right. when I can see that it starts to become more real. You remember when we interviewed John, John Livesey and uh, when I interviewed John Livesey of Quantum RE and, yeah. and he was talking about that they were creating this almost like a game at the front of their real estate. Right. So like you could like, you know, it's like you could make your trial portfolio. Like yep. all of a sudden people saw how it could work and they started right. to get and excited about need. it. Right. That's what you need. You need that. So you're having your tech delivered. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh such gosh. a big deal because that's when you can start to see it. Because as I was watching it, I was like, oh, I could get in that cool high rise for 50 bucks. Like, right? Like, yeah. Wait a minute. That's in a, York? That's a like, hotel in New York City that I can just get into for I know, 50 bucks. I'll do that. That, I know, awesome. I like, that looks cool. Like, I was just thinking that. I was like, yeah. I'm I would like, do that. Yeah, I, I could do that. And so it just, it, that's I mean, what really gets people started. That's what gets businesses to take flame. And, and that's just, the thing, you know, you can tell someone all day long, we're just, we're Zillow meets E Trade. And they're like, how does that work? You know, but you show them, look, here's the Zillow part where you look at pretty properties and here's the E-Trade part where you buy a piece of them. There you go. Now you have it. And yeah. Like, and oh, you can wow. see it right there. Yeah. And yeah. So, and so, yeah, so it's, you know, that is so critically important and I'm so glad you've gotten to this stage because I think it's oh going to really take off for you. Um, and go, yeah, I really oh, so. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, guys, we, you know, we're, we're going to wrap this up here, but we just, we would love to hear these kinds of stories. So if you have more of them, if you've got, uh, especially ventures that are in this process, really showing people what you're working on and doing, we've been getting a lot of feedback from my, my, uh, stint on Larry King now yep. and from the episodes we've already done. And what we've been getting back from you guys is that the, this application and use sec this segment of is not getting enough visibility out in the general blockchain exactly media of any yep. kind that there's all they're all talking tech and we're talking application here and so exactly. we'd love to keep this up we've decided that this is going to be more of the direction that we're going to go in because you guys like it you're interested yeah, yeah exactly so. we need to like make sure that this is real use case uh, because if you guys don't understand even like how this, how this happens in, in real time and in real life, then the tech, really the tech is in the background. If the tech is in the foreground, it's just for people that are deep in tech and that's not the average consumer. So we're here to talk about use cases and what makes, makes sense and makes a difference in the actual real world. That's right. So I'm super excited about this. I also want to remind you guys, Mark S.A. Smith's episode that we did on Blockchain Executive Summit. That's an opportunity as well. He's, he, we haven't set a date for this uh, Blockchain Executive Summit, but what we're looking for is feedback to see if you guys are interested in having one. Mark right. would help sponsor that and uh, help make that go, and it would be in Las Vegas. And, you know, it's, it's great because the more I thought about that, I was like, wow, I need that check. I need right. that check. Like, check. Yeah, and, <laughs> exactly. and, and so, you know, what you were highlighting before about making the decision about, do I need a CTO? Do I need a partner? That's something that they could really help you evaluate if that's what you're looking for. Like, right. or if you have a, a corporation already and you're like, do I need to bring in a blockchain team or should I work with someone outside initially to evaluate whether or not we should take on this venture or take on right. this 
adjust, you know, shift in our business. Exactly. Exploring it. Right. And so this is a great place to do that. I think it's a great, a great format for it as well, because it's really tied to the business planning side of things. So it has a business goals, business case study at the end of the day. So yep. I love that one as well, because it really ties to getting things done. Right. <laughs> and done. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah exactly. Exactly. So that's kind of our message today. Like get things done. So you get, get it done. Get things sold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get revenue positive quick. <laughs> yeah, really. Exactly. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, this is Tracy and Monica. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much. It's been great. It's been great going through this and thank you for being here just to hear me <laughs> beam and gloat about my benchmark that was hit. <laughs> that's right. Yay. So right. And, until next time, this is the new trust economy.